Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Support is Sexy. This is, all of them are special, but this one is super duper special. This one is next level, my new boo special. I have Miss Nubia Young here, who is the founder of Black in Tulum and so much more that you're going to hear about, about her and how we met in, uh, no, we didn't even meet in Tulum. We met in Cancun. It's a whole thing. It's amazing. It's a, I, whole, I just, I'm, story. It's a whole thing. I'm just crazy <laughs> about her and I'm going to tell you about her and we're going to jump in. Nubia Young is a global visionary and quintessential connector. She is the CEO and founder of Black and Travel, a community for melanated travelers. She lived on four continents and explored over 44 countries, facilitating intercultural collaborations and documenting her love for food and adventure. Nubia is on a mission to inspire Gen X professionals to embody the power of manifestation. She believes in bringing people together and is passionate about helping women create their own realities to do what they love unapologetically. Nubia has been featured in Elle Magazine, Vice, Travel and Leisure, Nomadic Mad, and many other digital platforms. Martha Stewart, too, I think, Miss Nubia. Thanks. She was featured in all the places. <laughs> featured in all the places. <laughs> and she is just an, an amazing, beautiful spirit. And I'm so happy to know her. So please welcome Nubia Young. Yay, Nubia. Thank you so much for having me, Elaine. I am honored to be a guest on your show. It is long overdue. So thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you. Absolutely. Yes. And eBay in the uh, chat already put manifestation with a question mark. You're going to hear all about it. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. And thank you for reminding me actually to say if anyone watching this live has any questions for myself or certainly for Nubia, please put them in the chat. If you're watching on LinkedIn or on Facebook Live, put them in the chat. I'll take a look at them and we'll ask her some questions at the end. But right now to start, Miss Nubia. Yes, ma'am. What led you? Well, first, let's tell people where you are zooming in from or streaming in from, I guess we should say. I am tuning in from the beautiful Playa del Carmen, Mexico, where I reside. I mm -hmm. am a resident here, so this is home. Mm -hmm. And what is Mexico. the path that led you to Mexico? Like, how, how you get there? How you okay, get there? So what had happened? Gonna, <laughs> what had happened was we're gonna <laughs> we gonna skip some parts. But I left the United States about six years ago when I was just tired. I was sick and tired of how I felt like I was being treated as a black woman how black men were being treated in America, you know, the PTSD around getting pulled over and not knowing if you're going to get home, you know, the George Floyd situations, just all of it. And I bought a one-way ticket. I had ended up getting laid off on my job after being there for a number of years. And I was just, I just felt really unfulfilled. You know, I was mm -hmm. going through some things mentally, emotionally, physically, and I was just like, I got to go. And had no rhyme or reason, no clue where I was going to go. But during that time, I kept searching for YouTube videos, messages, something from people that looked like me that were in my age bracket about them moving or living abroad. I couldn't find it. So I bought a one-way ticket, went to Thailand, and I started a podcast there called Chronicles Abroad. And it, it highlighted Gen X travelers who got up and started their eat, pray, love journey, right? And so that podcast popped off and went really well. And I started dating somebody while I was in Asia and they said they wanted to move abroad. And I was like, you know what? I'm not bringing you to Asia. How about we do something closer to the States like Mexico? And I bought tickets. Wait, to you started dating, dating someone who was back in the States who said they yes. wanted to move abroad. OK. And when you yes. moved, you moved from Maryland. Where were you when yes. you moved? I, Maryland. I, I okay. moved from, yeah, I moved Maryland from Virginia. Maryland to Thailand, Actually, from Virginia mm -hmm. to Thailand. OK. And then yeah. you were like, OK, let's let's try Mexico. Baby steps. Exactly. <laughs> and they chickened out. They chickened out four days mm -hmm. before we were supposed to leave. And I said, mm -hmm. well, I'm still going. And I landed in Mexico and I fell in love with the country and I haven't left ever since. And I've been here yeah. almost three years. Oh my goodness. Yes. Now everyone, just so you know, Kent Parsons is hey. um, one, of, one of the things that I just have to tell this story. I was in, I was in Mexico visiting at the time, visiting. I was taking a trip. Well, I was by myself those first few days and then a girlfriend, Atia, came later. I was in the hotel, the Canopy Hotel in Mexico, in Cancun. I think I had just gotten in that day, maybe, and was having lunch, sitting on the side. And uh, people were milling about in the 
uh, lobby. And then I was headed up to my room to shower, change, or who knows, lay down. I don't know, whatever. It was Mexico. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just happy to be there. And I walk by and I see this beautiful sister sitting on the couch in the little canopy lounge area, which is quite lovely. Anyone go to Canopy Hotel in Cancun. And what what did you say? I think we said, we definitely said hey to each other. I just and said, then hey, said, hey, I said, sis. Are you, I said, hey, sis, are you by yourself? And you was like, yeah. yeah. And I was like, and then, so am I. And then, I know. And then I said something like, I can't, somehow, listen, y'all, somehow it came out that she said, I think you said maybe how long are you here? And I might've said the same. And she was like, I live here. And ever since oh, yes. then. And so you sat down ever very since quick. Then, okay. I was just like, <laughs> You live here, <laughs> do you? And that was it. And we were together yes. like every day after that, hanging out. And she was working, but I was hanging out. Yeah. Um, and I would tell you, Nubia transformed our whole trip just because of the type of person that she is. So again, I was there by myself the first few days, the type of person that she is, and then her business itself, Black and Travel, which you'll hear more about. But just the way she, even the, hey, sis, are you by yourself? How are you doing? That is just her, as as it said in her bio, a global <laughs> connector. So talk yes. to me a little bit about, you know, making a move like this from Maryland to Asia, then to Mexico. A lot of us, I'm one of those people, as you well know, think about moving abroad, talk about doing it someday, one day, but you did it. What was it that we know kind of the impetus for what made you decide to make a change, but what gave you the courage to go ahead and make that move? I didn't see any other way. There was this, you know, a everybody has an intuitive nature about themselves, right? But there was this energetic field that was literally pulling, like pushing me out. It was like, you got to go. And I really don't know how to explain it. It's, it's, people might think I'm crazy when I say it, but I was energetically pushed out. It was like something needed to change and something needed to change drastically. So my daughter had just went off to college and my son was still in high school. And I just picked up the phone, called his father and was like, it's time. Like, <laughs> I need to pack his stuff. He's coming to live with you. I right. got the other one off to college. Now it's your turn. I got to go. And I literally was like, it's time for you to go live with your dad. I need to do something. I got rid of the house. I moved into a friend's, um, like her, she had like a room in the basement, like a basement mm -hmm. area. And I moved there mm -hmm. for a few months, just getting myself together and, and getting rid of things. And I think the process of it all was the hardest because mm -hmm. you don't realize how attached you are to materialistic items, especially after having a house and kids and accumulating so much stuff. Yeah, so right. it, it took me a couple of months and it was a lot of times when there was a lot of tears, there was a lot of frustration around like, oh my gosh, I have all this stuff and I'm selling you know, clothes from Nordstrom and Zara for like five dollars because I'm ready to just leave, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, before I left, it was one of those things where I just said to the universe, like, I'm open. I'm open to whatever this journey is going to bring good, bad mm -hmm. or indifferent. I'm open. And had I not been open, I probably wouldn't have lasted the entire six years. But I went into it with a fresh mind and open, you know, and I was not a traveler prior. I traveled, but I never got to stay longer than three, four, five days. I think my longest trip ever was a 10 day trip to Europe, you know. And so it was kind of like I was new to this whole world of being an expat. Mm -hmm. And I was just excited. I was excited. I was scared. I was exhilarated. I was anxious. And all of the emotions were there, but all I knew is that I had to try. That I had to try. That's beautiful. That's and I love Barbara Bijou here, who is a woman whose vision board workshop I have taken for 10 years or so now. So I know she's loving all this talk of manifestation and vision. Hey, Barbara. Um, and I love too that you, what you didn't say, I, we all heard all the beautiful things you did say. What you didn't say is that you were fearless or that you, you know, that you went without, I didn't have any inhibitions. I didn't have any fear or anything like that, which would be fine if you had said that. But I, I want people all. to... I, I want people to catch that you said all those things, yep, were there in one way or another. But what you decided to do was be open and sort yes. of trust, trust the process, trust, trust the, process. the space and being pulled um, or pushed out, but pulled towards something, I think, is a powerful place to be in. OK, yes. so when you we know you went to Asia, but when you get to Mexico, how does Black and Travel and Black and Tulum and all of the wonderful things that you're doing now come about for you? 
So the crazy thing is, you know, just like I was like, hey, sis, that's who I am. Right. Mm -hmm. That's who I am. I have always been in hospitality. I love events. I love tourism and just really talking to people, getting to know their stories and sharing stories. So from the podcast, I got to meet so many wonderful people from across the globe, because at that point in time, I had podcasted maybe three, four years by the time I got to Mexico. So I had developed so many relationships and networks. So by the time I got to Mexico, I was pretty established in what I was doing. However, um, I moved to Mexico City when I first got here. Not many Black people at all. So <laughs> I did meet a few, but those few had they had jobs. They were teachers. Mm -hmm. They were wives of corporate, you know, um, VPs and presidents and stuff like that. So they were there living as a diplomat or, you know, they had some kind of status there. Here I was just kind of floating around, figuring out, you know, what I wanted to do. And, and I really just fell in love with the Latin culture here. And then it got started getting chilly. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I follow the weather. Take me somewhere warm. Warm, right. <laughs> so you were in Mexico City at the time. You were like, it's cold here. <laughs> I said, it's getting too cold. I'm going to go right. to Playa del Carmen and visit some other people of color that I knew were out here, came here. And I was like, ah, it's nice. The beaches are cute, but there's so much tourism here. So I was like, I want to go somewhere a little bit more quiet, someplace I could just kind of reconnect and see something different. And I had heard about cenotes. I heard about Tulum. Mm -hmm very briefly through somebody else. So I Googled Tulum and I, I found out it was only about an hour away from Playa del Carmen and found my way there and got there. I packed for four days. I said four and put up three fingers. Four days. It's funny. That's what you do when you're in the island. You're like so free. You're like three, four, five, you know, whatever. I don't even know what day it is. It doesn't matter. You're so, right. I went and I stayed at a hostel named Mayan Monkey. And it was a brand new hostel at the time. It was probably open maybe about two months. Girl, I walked in that hostel and was like, whoa. I videotaped and did all this like, you know. Because it was um, so nice. It was beautiful. And, you know, our cons our um, thoughts of hostels mm -hmm. came from, like, the movie Hostel and, like, you know, and it's young not college like kids. And it's not like that anymore. There are some really high-end boutique yep. hostels. So I went to this hostel and I asked somebody, how old is this place? This is nice. Da -da -da. Come to find out their flagship is in Cabo San Lucas. And the Tulum was Tulum one was one of their most recent newer ones. So I asked to speak to the manager and I said, hey, this is beautiful. You know, I would love to, you know, give you guys some reviews or whatever. And the manager said, we've been watching you and you've been talking to everybody and videotaping. What do you do? And I was mm -hmm. like, I'm a traveler. You know, I'm, I just travel and I have a network of people that kind of follow my journey and I share my experiences and stuff. And it was like and they offered me a position right then and there to stay room and board for free for me to work with helping, you know, tourists come in and helping them with um, like renting bikes and going on excursions and, you know, stuff like that. And I stayed for 45 days. What? I, had enough I didn't for know. <laughs> First of all. It's okay. But again, it's the Caribbean. You're going to recycle it. It's fine. But you're staying yes. room and... Oh my goodness. I didn't know this part of the story. This is so yes. amazing. And I have oh, to say, Shalanda so Marie Al said, daughter in college. And she did yes, this face, sir. right? Shalanda Black, don't cry. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> daughter in college. Yes. My oh my is goodness. actually here in Mexico with me now. Uh, oh my goodness. Her youngest is 22, everybody. Yeah. So they offer you a job. So I love this. Again, just being open, flexible. You didn't say, oh no, I only have clothes for four days. It sounds like you were like, okay. Sure. I stayed. I, I stayed, stayed in Tulum and I loved it. It was such a beautiful place and it was pretty untouched at the time. You know, there weren't many people of color. There weren't um, a lot going on. It was a very lazy town, right? Kind of like beach sleepy town, town, sort of very sleepy town. Small, yeah. Beachy and I've been, town. but only on vacation. You don't think of it to live necessarily. Exactly. So I ended up staying and um, long and behold, I was supposed to leave <laughs> back to Asia on March 25th. So when I left Tulum, I came back to Playa del Carmen and I landed a position as a director of a luxury um, black owned travel company. 
And so I was working with them, getting prepared for the upcoming travel season. And we started in January. And by time March hit, we were already under lockdown. All right. So I ended up getting quarantined. Exactly. I ended up getting quarantined in Playa del Carmen before we were heading to Singapore. And I quarantined for those months. And people felt like they couldn't travel anywhere because they kept saying all the borders were closed. Mm -hmm. Well, Mexico's borders were never closed, technically. The air borders were still open, but the land borders were closed. So when the state of Mexico, I mean, not the state of Mexico, the state of Quintana Roo decided to open up a little bit and allow us to travel from, you know, Cancun and to Playa to Tulum, I went back to Tulum found an apartment and I, I stayed because mm-hmm. I couldn't go anywhere else. Girl, that's when Black and Tulum started. I <laughs> put together. <laughs> so, I, mean, I mean, of I course, there's together. been some horrible things from COVID, but there's been some brilliance that came oh, out of quarantine. I mean, it it skyrocketed. It was like a respite for people that was like, finally something that we can do because everybody Mm -hmm. had been cooped up for, you know, what they said initially two weeks and then two weeks turned to several months, you know? Mm -hmm. So I went to the beaches of Tulum again. Some of the beaches were still shut down. Some things were still slower, but things were starting to pick up just a little bit. It was so beautiful because nothing had been touched for months on end. And then, but it was so sad at the same time because people here thrive off of trying to sell, right? Like tourism and there's no tourism. Mm -hmm. So I found like a small, you know, couple of people that I would see here and there. And I was like, yo, let's, let's go to brunch together. Why is there a handful of people of color here? We're not connecting. Like that doesn't make sense. Let's connect. And I had a brunch. That brunch had eight people. And And this was when this was like April, May, May. This was actually in July. July, okay. Of 2020, yes. I was quarantined from March to July. And then I went to Tulum and I started at the end of July. And Mm -hmm. I didn't have a name for it or anything. It wasn't supposed to be a business. It was just like, let's get together. The intention was connecting. That's it. That was the intent. And I had the first one, eight people came. Second one, 20 something people came. It wasn't until there was a beautiful family, husband and wife duel with their son. And they come pretty much running in there. Just like, black people home. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like, hey. Right. And they were coming from Merida. They were actually living in Merida. And they heard about people of color being in Tulum. So they came to Tulum. And somebody was like, yo, this is dope. And I was like, let's create a, a group on Facebook where we can connect and do this more often. And I looked around and I was like, let's call, let's call ourselves Black in Tulum because we're Black people in Tulum. In Tulum. And I opened the Facebook group that day and I asked everybody at the brunch, would they, you know, join the group? They joined the group, 23 people. Today, we are a year and seven months old. We have 20,000 people in the Facebook group and 23.3 thousand on our Instagram and an email list over 16,000. It's amazing how it's it just skyrocketed. Amazing. Oh, I love the story. Anyone, if you have questions, I'm going to keep going. But if you have questions for Nubia, please ask her. We're speaking to Nubia Young, who is the CEO and founder of Black in Travel. And she's talking about how it all started with Black in Tulum. Nubia. Oh, my yes. goodness. I love that. I love the story of that growth and how it was organic and also how connection was at the center of it. And it's yes. funny, I've been having, I mean, as most people probably have been having such conversations about if you were in any way conscious or aware, or even if you weren't, I feel like during 2020 and even in 2021, you realize how much we're all connected or how much we need connection. Even if we we were so busy before that, I feel like of doing our own thing, everybody in their own space, et cetera. And this idea of community and connection was missed. And that's what you yeah. tapped into organically. So tell us now what Black in Tulum looks like today. What kind of, I know you're doing so much in addition to all the people, but what? Yeah. how has it expanded and grown today? Or Black in Travel, Black in Tulum is part of that. Yeah. So Black in Tulum is how we started. I call it our flagship brand, right? I was hosting approximately four to five events a week, including yacht experiences. I went on one of those. (laughs) exclusive brunches actually when I met you it was because I was at Canopy because Hilton and I 
um, partnered up and mm-hmm. I was at the hotel doing um, some meetings. So I was kind of just like checking Cancun out. And while I was there, I had access to restaurants. You know, we had yes. table. <laughs> The we food. Had, I wish y'all were there. Food. I can't even explain. We had the, the food, the scenery, the music, dancing. The it was just hospitality was off the hook. And Nubia does not play when it comes to the hospitality. She will check somebody quick in a kind way <laughs> to let them know you need to step it up. <laughs> but it was amazing. Amazing. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. So you were doing so- five or six events a week. Yes, I was burning out. And then unfortunately, in November, my father um, passed away. So Mm -hmm. I literally had to drop everything because I am the only child. So it just, you know, and what it taught me was that, A, I think, how can I put this? I was upset at the fact my father was an absentee father all my life. And then we kind of reconnected when I was like 30 something. Um, He was a great grandfather and everything. But I didn't have as much time to really get to know him. So for him to just kind of like pass away on me, I was like, what the hell? (laughs) You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like you abandoned me when I was a kid and now you're abandoning me as an adult. You're supposed to be here. And being the only child, I didn't really have anybody to reach out to, to talk to and all those things. And what it taught me was that I didn't have the right people in place in my business because Mm -hmm. I needed to leave. And if I left, that meant my business stopped. Mm -hmm. So I had to like basically halt almost everything. And that was devastating because this was now my bread and butter. It's, you know, Black and Tool was my full time. People relied on on my events because they planned their trips around coming to these events. So there was a lot of guilt, anger, frustration, hurt, sadness, all of that. And what it taught me, though, was you need to get your stuff in place, Nubia. You know what I'm saying? Like, Black and Who was great. It's fun, right? But it's a business. So as a business, you need to have the right people in place. You need to have people you can trust. You need to have, you know. So I had to take the time out. The universe basically was put me at a halt. And so I decided to rebrand as Black and Travel because I wanted to be able to expand outside of Tulum. Because if I stayed Black and Tulum, it kept me in a box, you know, mm-hmm. and I wanted to expand and create more impact and be able to utilize the resources that I've learned along the way and the things that I've heard people say that they are looking for and want and desire and take that globally. So as Black and Travel, I decided to halt on, you know, five or six events and only holds two a week, um, which I put other people in place of, in place of while I work on the back end to bring in an executive team, to bring in people that have the knowledge and the experience that can work alongside me. And that's mm-hmm. where I'm at now. And so now you, when you say expanding other areas, it's, um, it's, uh, sounds like it's scaling to other destinations. Correct. I know I got an email about, was it Singapore? Is Dubai. It was a couple Dubai. Yes. I like I signed up I signed up for all the waiting lists, everybody. All the waiting <laughs> lists. I was like, yep, I wanna go, I wanna go, I wanna go. Because, and this is the thing too, and I think, you know, from just a business standpoint for everyone, one, we talked about intent already, but also doing your best with what you have, right? Yeah. One of my favorite quotes is from Arthur Ashe that says, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. So you think about it, Nubia started with a brunch, which I'm sure was lovely and put together lovely and at a great restaurant. And But it wasn't like, I'm going to go uh, launch this big beach party, looking out for 100 people to show up. And I mean, if you can do that, that's great. But I think sometimes we think it has to be like this to begin, as opposed yeah, to what do I, what do I really want to create here? And then how can I grow that? I've been even looking at my myself in that way. Like, what am I really trying to create? What's the important sort of centerpiece of all of this? And then how can it grow, you know, outside of that? And then you start as you are putting these other things in place. And of course, I'm so sad to hear about your dad passing. And, um, and I think, though, your insight on that time period is is so enlightening because it is you know a moment where you're like wait a minute if anything you know if you have to step away or you just want to go on vacation even if nothing tragic or anything happens right even if the founder and ceo wants a break or you're going away to do you know even people who are ceos take sort of self-care trips to brainstorm or come up with other ideas etc you don't want your business to stop 
just to because suffer, you have yeah. to do those to suffer. Yeah, not even to stop to suffer. So a couple yeah. of comments here from Natasha. Thanks, Natasha said, I've been considering a move myself. I went to Mexico four times last year. Natasha, you need you go on and move. You've been to Mexico four <laughs> times in the last year. Uh, I would suggest, what do you, do you suggest she joins Black in Tulum on yes, uh, the Facebook most group? definitely. You can join Black and in Tulum on Facebook and group. And travel and follow. Yes. Go ahead. Well, How else? you know, Natasha, I think it's great that you're even interested in moving to Mexico. And, you know, this is the first time I'm saying this live and out loud, but one of the things that I'm really considering doing with Black and Travel is assisting people with moving abroad temporarily, either for a sabbatical or for, you know, Mm. a couple of months. I have friends that have been doing it now since I've been here for the last three years. People are like, you know, how you like, you know, and they're so comfortable with knowing that I'm here. So, you know, helping people to get an apartment for two months, three months, making sure the Wi-Fi is set up, making sure it's close to, you know, the grocery store, making sure, you know, it has all the the bells and whistles that you need to feel comfortable at the price point that you need. And I've been doing that now for the last couple of years. And I'm just like, this is a whole ass business. This is a whole ass of a a business. (laughs) This is Black and Travel Concierge (laughs) Service. Black and moving. (laughs) Yes. Oh, my goodness. It's something that I'm seriously considering because I know so many of us want to do it. And not everybody, like you said earlier, Elaine, has that fearless, I'm just going to do it. And and some people need structure in a certain way and they feel more comfortable. And people have other considerations. I always tell people we all have different considerations. Maybe like for me, I don't have kids, but it would be my parents and, you know, things here that you have to put in place. So we all have those things. But I think I love that idea of helping people as a business to put some things in place so that they feel more comfortable. And I think, Natasha, this might be, you know, of course, I don't know your background, all your uh, experience or what ties you might have in the States. But the idea of for anyone who is thinking about moving abroad, what Nubian just said, maybe you can go for a couple months or for especially like the summer or, you know, certain time of year. Maybe it's slowing your business or company. You can go and work remote, especially now while mm-hmm. companies are still kind of open to the remote thing, even though they're trying to push people back into the office because they have all this yeah. real estate. That's a whole other thing. But, you know, just this idea of how can you what are what are the possibilities? And I think that's one of the things that um, for me that Nubia certainly represents personally, as a woman, as a black woman, as a business owner, and all of these different ways, what are the possibilities? Why do I need to They're be endless. limited? They're, They're endless. actually endless. Exactly. Because the reality is you create your reality. You know, if you go into it with, you know, um, fear, like lots of fear where it keeps you stagnant, it's almost like you can't move. You have to allow yourself comfortability. And, you know, not everything in life is comfortable, but you got to feel enough. If you feel enough comfortable comfortability to at least make the first step, you never know what's going to happen once you keep stepping and who mm-hmm. you're going to meet and the things. And it just opens the floodgates. I would never have met Elaine had I not opened my mouth and said, hey, girl, hey, like, you know, yeah. And, it's almost like Drake's song, No New Friends. I hate that song because I'm just like, no, absolutely meet new people. You never know you never who know. you're going to meet. A simple smile and a simple yep. hello goes a long way. It could be your next. Uh, honestly, I met my partner by knocking. My partner was my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> and I knocked what on the door doing? to yeah. introduce myself to say, hey, I'm your neighbor, Nubia. And we've been together ever since. We get, oh my gosh, you know. never know. You exactly. Know. You never know. And if, if nothing else, like you, I, we, you might find love or you might just meet someone and have a brief connection. That's what I say about connecting with people with, you know, with asking for hurt. support or stuff. It's, it can't hurt. It's just a little connection. All right. I, all of a sudden, all the questions are popping up here. I love it. All right. Let me make sure we get some of these in. Uh, Morgan G says, hi, Morgan. Um, how many black people are there now? I guess she means in Tulum. And what is the cost of living in comparison to, say, Los Angeles? Oh, um, well, L.A. is far. <laughs> okay, maybe the state overall average. <laughs> let me start with the first question. How many black people are here in Playa del Carmen in general? Because between Cancun, Playa del Carmen, and Tulum, there's thousands, mm-hmm. literally. And are when there communities? Go ahead. Yes, go ahead. 
You go. Oh, okay. Uh, When I first got here, there was a handful. Now there are thousands, literally. I mean, I can honestly say there's a hundred plus just in Playa by itself, you know, a couple of hundred that probably live here temporarily and some that have their residency and live here now. And And cost of living cost of living wise, let's say just because we're going to just give a range kind of Morgan, not necessarily LA, but what could you, how, what kind of things could $2,000 a month get you in Playa del Carmen? Girl. Girl. Okay. So I already know I'm ready to move. I already know. So I'm just telling you to tell Morgan and them what (laughs) just give people a thousand, whatever. I'm going to put everything on the higher end because things are becoming more expensive as more people flooding, right? I mean, it's it's literally that's what happens when mm-hmm. when they see that people want it, they jack the prices up. Currently, we have a two bedroom condo with a huge, beautiful, you know, like walls that open up into complete windows, rooftop um, with pool, you know, all beautiful amenities. Right. A thousand dollars a month. And I have a housekeeper. I had a cook at one point. And we have a masseuse that comes to the house. And I mean, what else do you need? It is all I know. I know. Morgan, just move. Just move. Just move. <laughs> you know, I it's, mean, it's awesome. literally but everything that's one together for 2000 you could live extremely comfortable. For 2000 you could live closer to the beach. I live about, we walk to the beach in the mornings and that's about a 10, 15 minute walk. Um, but if you want to live on the beach side and be at the beach, then you're at the higher end. You're probably going to get a two bedroom for a 15 or 1600. Yeah. So that's, that's, and I think, you know, to, to Morgan, just to first follow black and travel, make sure to follow Nubia and they, they have, their emails are fantastic, full of information. And of course what they're up to, but I think that's something that's important for people to consider too. When you're thinking about making a move or considering for a short term, however you're going to do it, looking at it's not, it's cost of living, but you and I, Nubia always talk about quality of life. That is what, I mean, I think that's what you pulled you. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but thinking quality of life wise, that's what had attracted me to Mexico. Quality of life possibilities because of talking to Nubia, because of talking to Akina, who we both know, who is also there um, with her son and her nephew. So just getting, hearing the experience of other people who have done it is so, so powerful. So I want to get to some more questions. Okay, Nubia, the love m- movement said, is exist excuse me, is it difficult to find employment in Cancun? I actually will be coming down there next Thursday to Cancun, but would love an opportunity to stay long-term. So what is your insight? We know you're not, you know, Uh, the employment person, but what do you think of opportunities? If you're in in tourism or hospitality at all in any way, shape, or form, you may have a little bit easier way of getting uh, employment in Mexico. Honestly, if you don't speak Spanish, it might not be the best course of action for you. If you do have language in your background and your belt, then A-okay. I honestly would say get a job that has remote access where it allows you to live anywhere in the world. So this way you can have and get your residency in Mexico by proving to them that you can sustain yourself here. And because mm-hmm. you know, they don't want you to come here and take jobs from the Mexican people. That's the that's why it could be so difficult. But, you know, things like Amazon, Netflix, they all have headquarters in Mexico, in Mexico City, mm. Monterey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Colgate, Benz. I mean, Volkswagen has a factory in Puebla. I mean, some of the top heads are uh, Deloitte. Uh, all of those places have headquarters in Mexico. So if you can find a corporate job, if you want it, if you're in the corporate world, if you can find a corporate job in the States that has ties internationally, that's a way to look at it. Or just find a job that is allows you to work remotely. And a lot of these countries are starting to open up visas for digital nomads, you know. Right. I saw that, that people, the different countries, certain countries are, are uh, like, just like you said, opening opportunity or possibilities for digital nomads, people to work remotely, mm-hmm. all these different kind of because people because that the possibility was always there. I know I'm one of these people who's like, Zoom has been there forever, but it's fine. Everybody just gone on. But the companies are like, oh, if I can, it's more better, it's better for them because they get more access to all this talent that can come from anywhere or now who can work from anywhere. So, and they don't have overhead. They don't got to pay for your office. Exactly, exactly. So Nubia, what would you say you are uh, most excited about these days when it comes to black and travel or anything? The possibilities. 
honestly, I think that I know I'm a visionary. I'm a dreamer. I, I'm an idealist. I have so like my ideas expand the universe in a sense. It's funny. I was watching Kanye West um, bio doc yesterday on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, yes, he's a little, you know, he's going through whatever he's going through now. But I haven't seen that. It's actually not too bad because, you know, every I thought he, you know, just came in the game, but he had put in work to be where he is today. And he put in a lot of work, but he always believed in himself. He always was like, it's going to happen because I know I'm good. I know I, I know I can put in the job. So I am starting to adapt that kind of easy thought process like Nubia you've been doing this it's been six years you 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 know you wrote about it you talk about it you you know you mm-hmm. help people you've done this you put it in the work it's time it's time so in, in my heart in my mind I'm like I'm, I got my boxing gloves on I'm like it's time <laughs> you ready <laughs> right I see you Bob and Eva it's time it's time like, I love I'm that ready. I'm excited about the possibilities of what's happening next Yeah. And thank you for saying that, because I think sometimes that's all you got. Right. I mean, there's going to be times when it works to everyone listening and watching or watching it later. There's going to be times when it all works and it all looks good or even on social media. It looks like, oh, Nubia got it going on. She got it so easy. It comes up. You know what I mean? Where we know, you <laughs> know, the glow up, the goals. <laughs> exactly. You, you are. I love that. Love that about you, too. But that's the thing, you know, for, for everyone again watching. Just remember, sometimes that faith in yourself is all you got. And you have to kind of hold on to it and believe that you can accomplish whatever this is or figure it out or find someone who can support you. You know, we're all about sport. Sport is sexy. Find the people, the resources, the places that can support you. And Black and Travel and Numia are definitely one of those places for anyone considering opening your own borders, right? <laughs> Expanding your own borders and thinking about what's possible for you. So Nubia, tell everyone how they can find out more about you, where exactly they should follow, how they can get in touch with you and all that good stuff. Um, Natasha awesome. says she will definitely join the Facebook group. Thanks. Great, Natasha. Awesome. So right now we have not um, fully moved into Black and Travel. We are still named Black and Tulum. So you can look us up online at www. Black N I N Tulum T U L U M dot com. We are on Instagram at Black N Tulum. We are on Facebook at Black N Tulum, and also now TikTok. TikTok oh. we are um, listed, I believe, as Black and Travel because we're trying to move into this new space. So bear with us. And um, if you want to follow me directly, my Instagram is I am Nubia Young. And that is Young with an E. So I am Nubia Young. Excellent. A uh, one Berman apartment, 20 more hundred. Okay. I'm just looking at some of the other comments. Excellent. I think I put it in the chat, everyone, blackintulum.com. If you didn't get that, black in T U. T- L-U-M, Tulum.com. And you can follow on, again, Instagram, join the Facebook group, just get in touch. And I think, you know, follow Nubia, but you don't have to ask her personally the question, whatever question you have, or don't be held up by that. I'm not saying don't ask her. I just know that Nubia is very much about, there's a whole, there's 20,000 people in this group who can help you, who can, you know, who can support you. Like, don't. They're all awesome. The group is exhilarating. It's it's crazy to see. Exactly. They're sharing their experiences. If you say you're looking for a hotel, you know, you get immediate feedback, just like you would if you were looking at reviews somewhere else. These are It is the Black Trip Advisor from Mexico. I promise you. It is. That's why I'm telling people, like, don't be like, I sent Nubia a message. I'm waiting to hear back. Why? There's 20,000 people who literally tell you what they think of wherever you want to go so make sure I'm not the one staying in the hotels I have an apartment it's like you have to right <laughs> her experience is different <laughs> she's like I live here which is why I sat down next to her because I was like I want to live here too tell me all about it and I literally and it's funny okay I gotta say this before we go this is and I this is why I was drawn to Nubia because I know she's very much like this I was in Mexico traveling, having fun for a trip, you know, vacation, if you will, for a week or so after my book came out, 
Atia, my girlfriend, like I said, from DC was coming in and join me later. But I was really in the space of, could I live in Mexico? I've always wanted to live abroad somewhere. Um, South Africa is on my list. And I'm thinking, okay, as we said, considerations. Okay, Mexico is only a three hour or so flight from Atlanta. My parents are here. And if I were there, it would be easy to go back and forth. So again, thinking about the considerations. So that was in my mind. And I was there thinking, oh, I'm going to hook up with my friend Akina, who lives in Playa also. See her later. See how that goes check out how she likes it and then I meet this other sister who's there in the lobby and funny I would have walked past Nubia not because I was ignoring you I don't think I saw you because you were sitting on the side I was but I just remember hearing hey sis I was like hey <laughs> hey hey who's Hi. talking to me <laughs> Hi. so it not only changed my experience from fun and restaurants and hanging out and all that which it certainly was which we talked about and I also got a friend out of it and I got to explore what could be possible for me so again just being in that space just to share with you all from the other side of it someone who was there kind of like in that stage you were a few years ago I don't let's see you know let me just feel it out and see I I, I'm convinced I can do it I just gotta but it took for you to come and when you came you met me and that's my point is you never know who you're sitting next to you never know I've had a friend come visit me and she was like girl I'm on the flight and I hear people behind me going yeah you going to that Black and Tulum event on Wednesday (laughs) and she turned around and was like hey I'm friends with all (laughs) (laughs) right I know her I know her and I was dying laughing but it's amazing you just never know who you're going to meet with a simple hello Exactly. Nubia, thank you so much. I'm so glad we had our simple hello and that we are in touch now forever. I'm never letting her go. I'm so glad we have. We've been talking about this conversation since. Hi. We've been talking <laughs> about this conversation since, Um, I think, since Mexico. We we're going to do it there and we're going to do it later, later. So. So glad we had this conversation. Again, everyone, please follow blackintoloom.com or at blackintoloom on Instagram. Also, Nubia's I am Nubia Young with an E on the end. Make sure you follow her. And Nubia, we are going to keep watching you and celebrating you and just so excited about everything that's coming next. Thanks for being an inspiration to so many of us. Thank you for having me, Elaine. And if you haven't <laughs> copped that book, y'all better cop her book, y'all. That book yeah, is... I got honey, it. Honey, I've been reading it and going, oh my gosh, this is me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I need to stop saying I got it. I got it and let people help me. And that is going to help me in my business. So thank you for putting that out there for people like me. Absolutely. Thank you. Hold on just a second. Thank you everyone so much for participating. We'll talk to you soon.